Hey folks, and welcome back here to Gatekeeper Media as we continue to bring you coverage of the 2022 LWS Open at Idlewild out in Burlington, Kentucky. We're in the final round with our chase card, and now we've made it to the final nine. And we appreciate you all for tuning in. And a special thank you, of course, to our Patreon supporters who help make all this coverage possible. Once more, I am Dust Murray on the mic, and joining me yet again is Nathan Queen. Ready to wrap this thing up? Absolutely. We've got the dry weather today, resulting in more birdies on the card to start. I imagine we'll see the same on the back nine as these, as these players try to chase down the players in front of them and fend off the ones behind them. Yeah, many of these players looking for a big finish here, but none bigger than Isaac Robinson, who has a pretty nice little lead here uh, going into the back half of the course, looking for his first big win. And the rest of our competitors just looking to jockey for position as we kick things off here on hole 10. Yeah, finishing the front nine with one of the easier par threes. We go to one of the more difficult holes on the course in hole 10, 368 foot par three. Got to go about 260 feet straight before you slightly move to the left. You can get it to skip up the hill a bit. You'll have an opportunity for a birdie look. A very difficult one to reach. Although it is only 368, the uphill makes it play more 410, 415. Man, it's that stump you need to fly over, and Hamas has it. found it. Yeah, really well done. Didn't quite get to skip 40 we're talking about, but, I mean, that's the perfect line. Absolutely. He's up mid-circle, too, going to have an opportunity for a long birdie putt. I mean, that was such a beautiful flight. That's the one you want. Get lucky. Oh, man, a little, little left there from Klein. Just missed the stand-up he needed, but a good second kick to keep him more towards the middle should give him an opportunity to get an upshot up there. Conrad now looking to really attack that same gap. You'd imagine a little high out the hand. Fights through. Oh, and flies through a bit right side. Gets up there inside the circle. He's going to have one of the better looks of the weekend here. I feel like it's rare you see one get that close without some type of ground play being a factor. I mean, he had the perfect height on that thing to not hit the ceiling and just drift up there. That was so beautiful. A little force over here from Matt, but doesn't quite get it all the way. Yeah, it looks like he landed just there right in front of Kyle. Both of them just not quite getting the right turn that they needed. Get up there. Good shot, guys. <laughs> but that'll do for a nice par. Yeah, really good up there from Kyle Klein. Putter in hand here for Matt. Just looking to float one up there and grab his par. Still can't get over this ball crawfish shirt. One of the best jerseys, I think, in disc golf. I was hoping he was going to sneak through those trees there. I had a nice line. Had a nice line to pull off of the shirt. I kind of want to hear it anyway. It. I'll try to save it for later. Okay, okay, cool. But definitely cliffhanger. You got to tell us what it is if we don't get to hear it naturally. As Adam Hammes. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. A lot of rewind that. Yeah, a lot of drama on this putt just based on the bounce and almost thought about coming out, but it finds the chains. Wow. That's a big oh, one. Such excitement. He spins out on the way to go get it after the putt takes an elevator ride before it goes in. Come on, man. Oh, tough one there for Conrad. Has to settle for par despite the beautiful tee shot. Yeah, it looks like he had to reach out really far. That's a, that's a tough one to swallow when you get such a good drive on a difficult hole and then still don't have a clean look even inside the circle. Yeah, that's fair. It's still a good putt, just didn't quite grab. But Adam, that gives him a nice turkey now on the last three holes, catching up with the rest of the card here. And he's got a great opportunity to continue that birdie streak on hole 11, 242 feet. Throw your straight putter and hit the target. Yep, and Hamas will be first to act, and he's going for that same zone he's been using for approach shots time and time again, but can also power it when he needs the bigger distance. But that's a nasty kick. Yeah, the early release there. Yeah. 
Klein go for that low skip line. Not the more common one, but it is there. Yeah, he got a nice little touch off of a tree also. It looked like he pulled that a little bit too much, even though he was going for that line. More the classic gap attempt here from Conrad, but pulls it a little right. And again, this is a shot you feel Matteo would excel at, just knowing his background, where he comes from, and where he grew up playing golf. Again. Nearly. Oh, and misses that first tree, but catches the second one, kicks him down to the right side. Not what you expect to see from your chase card here. Hey, you when, 50, when 56 percent of the field catches the birdie on this hole, we only have one birdie look. It is just a spectator yep. rope after all, not an OB line or something like that. And yeah. Here we go. Now we've got the confirmation. He's going to go and get that out of his way. Nice bid, man. Nice attempt. Matteo looking to try to float one up there, perhaps. Give it a slight chance. Good line. Settles up nicely for an easy par. James now looking to save his par. Hmm. Not what you're looking for, especially on this hole. Kyle is a little closer than I thought he was for his birdie look. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, better opportunity than I gave him credit for. Yeah. He does card, does card a nice birdie. Yeah, skips forward a lot more than we thought, yeah. And does wind up getting it really well done. Oh, man, this isn't what you expect on this one. Our chase card is going to play the hole even. Yeah. That is true. Aver averaged a full half stroke under par. Yeah, usually you see a couple of birdies. Just one, though, this time around. It's going to be Kyle Klein, and Connor actually cards the bogey as we head into hole number 12. Yeah, much more difficult hole here. 644 feet, like we've said before. Throw it about 230, 240, and then dog leg straight to the right. Once you've done that, if you land in the middle, righty backhand gets you just around this corner before you skip to the left and hopefully have a soft landing without rolling away to the wood pile back there. My forehand off the tee is one of the more common shots, but I'm sure you'll see kind of just a straight backhand from Conrad. Yeah, this forehand is the aggressive play, and this is actually cutting that corner going inside of those trees. Best position we've seen and probably will see on the weekend. Fantastic shot. By far, yeah. That was an absolutely incredible forehand from Klein. Got the perfect ground action. Was perfectly inside without being in the wood line. Good looking this shot here from more, Hammes, too. Yeah, that's the intended line with the forehand, and he's done that better than we've seen the rest of the groups do as well. Two players in great position. Could it be three? Big flare here from Matty O, and he's in the dead center. Nice. Gets that high skip to keep him from pushing too far forward. Man, our chase card is annihilating this one after having some tough times on 11. And James almost catching that inside gap as well. Just hitting something, but still stays at least out of the trees. Looks like he's going for a forehand roller. Dude, I feel like this hole is probably some of the most forehand rollers you see on tour. It just feels like that really is the only option you have a lot of the time if you're not in the perfect spot off the tee. That V tree you see there, the main thing to deal with on Sorry. this gap. Gets it out nicely, but a little bit too inside, catches something and drops down. Yeah, I think the biggest issue that you see on approaches on this hole is that it's so downhill towards the back side of this fairway that a lot of people will push this deep. And this may... Oh, oh, oh. Be right underneath the basket. 
Man. What a shot from Adam Hammes. Hammes played this hole to perfection, something you rarely see. Wow, really well done. Kyle with the opportunity to do the same thing as he's even closer. Mm, got just one of those guardian trees near the green. And Connor has to go forehand roller for a second time here. This one looks a little better than the first, but still not really going to put him in position. Have a long look for the par there. Matty O. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's going to be some medicine for trying to run that. Yeah, that's one of the ones you need to keep low, match that ground angle, putting it that high and letting it fade. Have the side of the disc hit. It's gonna what be what causes that roll away there. James getting his a little higher than ideal also, but leaves it shorter and doesn't quite catch that steep slope. Stays up there. Still a bogey putt for him though. There you see Klein laying up, and I mean that really is a good choice to make considering the slope. And Matty O thinking about flicking one of his putting putters here. Check out our chase card gallery back there. That's the first look we've really gotten at on this round. Way to show out, Kentucky. Now we've been seeing crowds build and build each and every year here on the Disc Golf Pro Tour for our events, and always awesome to see. An unfortunate back-to-back -back bogeys there for James Conrad. Now Falling the, off the pace a little bit. Kyle Klein going to tap in a par. Matty O going to take a bogey himself here, and that's going to kick off hole 12, and we'll be back after a short break. My name's Garrett Gerthy. People may know me as Double G, and I've been making Double G craft jerky since I was 16 years old. And while Wakona and I are driving, don't have time to stop and eat, so I always have her grab me a small bag of Double G jerky. You got smash crack pepper on Tuesday, you can Wednesday you got mm -hmm. the garlic. Late in the round, you know, hole 14, you might need a little pick-me-up, pull out some Double G jerky. Grab the big bag, because you're gonna have to share. You can find Double G craft jerky at doubleggjerky.com. Here we are at hole 13, the famous Y hole, 584 feet. Make it through that Y over top of OB for the first part of your shot. You can get through that and then fade off to the left. You're gonna have the best opportunity to hit this second gap. And I really like the change on this hole. They've got some OB that comes into play down the left side on your second shot. And uh, definitely a more difficult par four here. Yeah, definitely have to have a little bit more of a thoughtful approach on your second shot as well as still maintain the difficulty of the tee shot. The yeah, Adam get a nice shot off there. Same Kyle here. Kyle looking to do something similar, yeah. <laughs> that thing just got stuck instantly. Velcro grass. Yeah, that wasn't letting anything through. There's like a slightly overstable fairway in hand here for Matty O. Good position there. Doesn't quite get a big skip down that hill, but does move off to the left side, and he'll be looking down that second fairway. And I believe this is full distance driver here for Conrad. <clears throat> Looked a bit inside at first, but actually looks great now. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Skips way on down there. Going to have a great look. And let's take a look at James's form right here. The well-known long run up because he's got those big long strides. Nice plant, you see him twist on his heel for maximum distance there, nice pull through. And having to abbreviate his follow through right there to make sure he doesn't fly off the end of the pad. Work. 
Great shot there from Matty O to give himself a birdie putt. Low skip forehand attempt here from Kyle Klein. Gets around that log. Uh-oh. Oh, no. And that has gone OB on the left side. Got a little bit too much torque on that forehand. And now Hammes gets stopped short in his approach. So playing for par. Conrad with the easiest look of all. I mean, he got way up there, dude. Fantastic drive and nice little branch touch there. He definitely had messed up his upshot. Got a nice little reed tree direction there. That should help get him back on track with a birdie after a couple of those bogeys. Just outside the circle for par here from Kyle. Yeah. Stops any damage after the OB stroke there with that putt. Really well done. Keeps him right now still towards the podium with about six holes left to play. Matty O, count that one. Yeah, foot up high, head down low, but putter in the basket. Nice birdie. And this hole still averaging over par to the point of three. With some double and triple bogeys coming into play yet again. I imagine there's some, some double OB penalties going on. Yeah, that, and it's just a trickier approach through and through, I feel like, with this change to the hole as we get on to 14. Another difficult par four. This one averaging just under par today, but 556 feet. If you can get your disc to land in this area, that's kind of the ideal landing zone without pushing too much. You'll have a small downhill shot from there, about 220 feet to the basket. You do have to carry a little OB Creek before you get there. And Matty O has overstable fairway driver in hand, looking to force this one over a little bit and have it trickle back. Oh, early. Needed to grab some corn off of his shirt and butter up that tree a little bit. Might have slid on by. That's what I was going to say earlier. But I had I a was... feeling. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I kind of picked up on that. Uh, didn't, you know what? Considering I was anticipating that for a bit, you did deliver. OP delivered. <laughs> I was hoping to use it when he did slide through something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. You never know if that's going to – exactly. I, I like the way you played it, man. Game's going to end up in a similar spot, though. Hits a couple trees and Plink goes down to the left side. Here we go. Now we've got a gap hit. Oh, yeah. That's way on down there from Adam Hammes. Fantastic. He'll have plenty of options to do whatever he really feels like from there. Yeah, I imagine he's probably going to flip the zone up there and get his birdie. So we are going to see. Oh, Kyle Klein's like, yes, I've done it. I've thrown he the forehand must... well. Yeah, he must oh, look at this. Trouble. Oh, my goodness. He's going to have an eagle look down there. Oh, my God. What a throw from Klein. He won't know it yet, but he's way up there. Let's take a look at his form here. See how he got all the way down there. You see him focusing straight forward and eyes never leave contact with his gap. And just a really smooth wrist flick there. What a cool shot. Yeah, that was awesome. Slightly understable mid-range here for Matty O trying to turn one over down there. What trees? Oh, well, he found one there. Yeah, he did. Nearly. Nearly something special there. Oh, another forehand sighting from James Conrad. Very clean release there. Gets down to the bottom of the hill nicely. Going to have a great opportunity to get his par. Yep, and here's kind of what we expected to see from Adam Hammes. Just a pretty easy chip up forehand to make sure he gets his birdie. Has pretty wide gap out in front of him. And maybe tracking the basket. Oh, my goodness. Nice little run there. Trying to get an eagle. Matty O trying to get up and down for par and does so very nicely. Yep, always, nice, always nice to not have a putt after a scramble. Indeed. That's Kyle Klein. 
Pretty easy approach there to make sure he gets his birdie after an excellent tee shot. Here's Conrad from distance. Jump putt, trying to track down that basket, but just a little low. Very nice line just off of, I'm not sure what you call that, the base of the basket, I suppose. The barrel? I don't know. The zing barrel. Yeah. I kind of miss the koozies. They do have a softer, softer look to them, softer feel to them as well. I think if these maybe had a top on them, they might look a little better. True. Something to cover that hole. Here we are, hole 15. 487 foot parkour, very steep uphill right here. If you can get to the top of this hill about this area, you've made it 290 or 300 feet. You're gonna have the best opportunity to get up and down. With about 200 feet left, a slight Anheuser shot around the corner, a soft forehand. Uh, but biggest, biggest thing here is off of the tee, making sure you miss this tree on the left. And forehand is the best way to hit this gap, in my opinion. It gives you the widest angle. Oh, and Hamas overturns that one a bit. Gets fortunate to get as far as he did. Not sure what kind of scrambling he's going to have from there, though. And a nice line from Kyle there, a little bit low, but gets the good ground play up to the top of the hill. That should be a little less slippery than yesterday. It'll yeah. be in a good spot. Yeah, footing has been often the biggest issue on this hole, especially with the no. rainy conditions. Is Matty O pulling that one right a little bit? Yeah, not good over there on the right. I'm not sure he made it far enough to go up that hill at all either. He's going to have to deal with the uphill and being in the woods. And that one flips up a little too much for Conrad. Balancing on a root here, <laughs> trying to get this up shot going. Yeah. Unfortunate to skip off to the right there, but looks like he still should have carried through those trees. Should have a good opportunity to get up and down. Forehand from the right-hand side of the fairway here from Matty O. That's also going to come up a bit short. And here's Hamas, kind of wondering where he was going to be after that tee shot. Looks like he's trying to flex over a forehand. Oh boy. Couldn't quite tell what happened there, but that can get dangerous when you're trying to do that. That's how you start going left and right, back and forth across the fairway. And it felt like he didn't force it over enough. Oh, no. Klein, though, oh. nearly exactly what he needed. Nice stretch out around the corner. Nice turnover shot. Matteo going to go ahead and tap in another scramble shot par. No way, Adam. Now he's gotten to some trouble a couple of times, but he's rarely let it leave a blemish on the car. Just that one bogey on hole 12, keeping him still very much near the top of the leaderboard. As we're going to see Conrad throw a nice up shot there. Adam wasn't in too much trouble over there, but still left his upshot a little short. Long look for par now, circle two. And just, I mean, you rarely see a miss like that. Usually at least good for metal every time. Definitely so, and you can see him. He's not used to missing like that either. Showing a little frustration. Kyle Klein, though, going to card his birdie, get to eight down for the round. I believe he is clean still, no bogeys. Yeah, and he was our returning champion, if I'm not mistaken, from Idlewild last year. And yeah. uh, certainly had the expectation. He had kind of a – I can't remember if it was his first or second round. That was a little rough. But he's fought all the way back now in third position with just a few holes left to play. So really well done. If disc golf is your game, make got to go. Got to throw your disc golf warehouse. With a huge selection of discs, bags, baskets, carts, shirts, and more. Gotta go, gotta throw.com has all the tools to take your game to the next level. Shop online or our Golden Valley, Minnesota store. Free shipping with all online orders over $75. 
online or in store. Get what you need for the game you love. Gotta go, gotta throw.com, your disc golf warehouse. In the game since 1993. Here we are at hole 16, the easiest hole on the course, all three days this weekend, 969 foot par five. I've been saying throw it 400 feet off the tee, 400 feet again, and then have a nice little upshot for the birdie, but might as well say it, these guys are going to rip it, try to get their eagles today. Moving day, we're going to see some 500 foot shots here, trying to attack the green on their second shot. Yeah, definitely one of those par fives that's very attackable. Either on the first or second shot, you can bite off a lot and try to go for the island, or at least try to give yourself like a you know, reasonable eagle putt from the other side of the moat. Huge drive com from Kyle there without making it look like, <clears throat> excuse me, without making it look that way at all. He has gotten close to that 500 foot mark. Mm -hmm. Now Matty O at the Crimson Tide special disc and puts that one way out there in his own right. There we go. Oh yeah, that bottom of the hill that you see right there before it starts going back up that's a good mark for the 480 500 feet oh yeah out there nicely oh beautiful shot such a nice slow drift what a rip let's turn that cameraman around gets just past kyle's disc there yeah all these guys are pushing near that 500 mark for sure if not just past it Let's see it one more time. Yep. What a grouping. Out there. Fades just a little bit more to the left. Going to throw a nice hyzer on this shot. See if he can either reach the green or come up just short of that water. Either way, a chance for Eagle as this one's coming in at a good angle. And we'll be just outside the circle. 35 to 40 footer there for Eagle. Same disc here. Keeping the Crimson Tide flying is going to be Matty O. This seems to be an attack for the green. Catching a late tree. He's also going to be inside circle two a bit farther out than Adam is. Still a chance though. So we're going to see Kyle Klein swinging out a hyzer here. Trying to crash it in. That is way out there. Oh! What a skip! Are you kidding me? He lands in the OB and skips onto the island. That but is bonkers, man. Yeah, there's no way he saw that. He's going to get a kick out of that whenever he watches this. That's incredible. I'm sure he walked up there to the green and was like, all right then. <laughs> Don't have to work for that one. As James Conrad lights one up down the fairway, does he get a favorable position? Going Bounces deep. at it. Oh, no. Man, a lot of the time you do see those come back down onto the green, but that one catches up. He's going to have a birdie look on the green. But oh. Eagle out of play after going OB. Matt looked like he hit the top end there, if I saw that correctly. We'll have to settle for birdie. Here is Adam Hammes again, about 35 or 40 from the pin for Eagle. Come on. Oh, one of those 50-50s on the right-hand side, and he caught the 50 that drops out. Yeah, it definitely was right. Could have stuck. This time it didn't. But still a birdie nonetheless, just as James has gotten one here. Unfortunate his disc doesn't fall back down there. I guess Kyle took all of the luck with that bounce out of the That was OB. so crazy, man. Just the perfect height on the skip to get over the cylinders there, and that's going to be a tap-in eagle for Klein, keeping him in third. Matty with yeah. the birdie. Puts him 10 down on the round now. There you have it. Very strong showing after winning last year, showing you why it happened. Moving us into hole 17, 287 foot par three. Just treacherous creek the entire way. 
very small green as well, 15 feet around it. Got a little more room on the left side. Yeah, the left side is usually the side you see people really try to play for, either use it as a landing zone or use it to kind of push towards. Klein going right up the gut here with this approach disc and play source right side, rolling on the edge and this time not getting the favor. No favors there, but he will be inside the circle pin height. Putting downhill at the basket shouldn't be too much issue for him. He's been a great putter today. Matteo floating the back can. Just a little wide right. Almost finding the island. All blue and yellow here for James Conrad. Oh, you like that line. Yeah. Yeah. Catches a late tree to put him just a little bit farther away, but still going to be inside the circle looking at a birdie. Adam going back to that beat in over stable approach disc. Try to get a straight shot to sit softly, but he's putting this one up high. Mm -hmm. Looks like it should settle. Yeah, I feel like he and Klein were both intentionally playing for that right-hand side. It is a play. If you do that, you need to leave it a bit short. If you get up where Kyle's at, you see it kind of slopes down to towards that creek where he did roll OB. And here's Conrad for birdie after finding the island off the tee. But drifts uh -oh. it right. Ooh, and... Lucky to catch a little bit of chains there. That looked like it definitely could have just sailed on into the OB. He's going to be able to collect a par, though. Speaking of pars, Matty O. Oh, my goodness. A rare wide miss left. Like, he just didn't commit. Yeah, you could see immediately out of his hand. I wonder if there was an issue with the grip. Something happened on the release. Stuck to his hand, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, again, you rarely see him not draw a medal. Kyle Klein, though, capitalizing on his par putt from the other side of the moat. And it's like it's going to be pars all around, except for Matty O here, who will be carding a bogey. Yeah, unfortunate, but lucky to stay. Lucky to not go OB again after airballing that putt. The third most difficult hole on the day today. All this OB around 29% of the field taking bogey or above. Brings us into the hardest hole on the course every day, 650 feet. Par four, hole 18. Get your disc to about right here. That's your best opportunity to get a birdie, but you'll still have 350 or 330 feet out of the gap below this low ceiling to finish out in the open here at Idlewild. Yeah, it feels like anything but pretty much dead center is treachery on this hole. This needs to trickle down right, but it does not. It looks like he is going to have an arm swing in there. We'll see what type of angle he has. Most likely nothing for a birdie, but definitely possible to get out of the woods from there. Meanwhile, Conrad laces this one. This looks fantastic. What a correction on this disc. I do believe this is a newer blue and yellow. It's flying much more stable than the old one. That's fair. It, has, it hasn't been quite turning to the right for him, so he put that, he oh. released that farther right. I tell you what, Adam. yeah, he got real fortunate on that. That looked scary for a moment there. It looked like it came out really early. So we're going to see yeah, Matty O, four-way driver. Oh. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a good ground play right there, not to get any skip. That's what I was worried about. It looked like a good line, but you always wonder if he's in a flare. No, no, no. Oh, no. That could be trouble. It's like... Klein's putting for a position here, yeah. Yeah, not going to go for getting out of the woods, but does get to a good spot. Should be able to get up and down from there. 
do have to wonder if maybe he's kind of checking scores, seeing the lay of the land, and realizing what he needs to make sure he kind of secures his position. Matty L going with the flow here out the mouth. Going to be a long putt for birdie there in circle two. Really like the correction James made off of that tee shot, changing his release angle on that disc to make sure it flies how he wanted to. Picks it up and throws it again, puts him, looks like just outside circle one there between the trees. Forehand roller here from Hammis does get out, but still a lot of ground to cover to get to the green. Kyle, after playing a pitch out shot, trying to get up and down for the par, sneaks through some branches, may still have a little bit to deal with there, but opportunity to save for the clean round. Hamish trying to play a bit of a skip shot there to maybe give it a chance, but also safely tucks it in to finish off the hole. Here's Conrad for a long birdie attempt. It's definitely an area of the course that he can land a putt from. We know that. Oh, my. So close. Yeah, it gives it all the height that he could. You have some, <clears throat> some low branches there. Catches lots of change, just doesn't quite stick. And, man, just a couple of putts that go wide left from Orem here at the very end of the round. Just, again, something you don't really expect. And speaking of unexpected, what was that? Come on. Come on. I don't think it really makes a difference for the outcome of the tournament, but that's just kind of – that's pretty annoying. That was for his clean round. That was an incredible par save that he hit right there, and it falls back out. Speaking of galleries, look at this group on the 18th hole here. Welcoming our chase card as they conclude their round. You see a couple of tap-ins to finish things off here out in Burlington, Kentucky for our competitors for the LWS Open at Idlewild. Another year of fantastic golf on what's been a great course over the years. And Kyle Klein indeed will finish third. Tie for six for Matty O. Hammis still tucks into the top ten alongside Conrad as they tie up for ninth position. Take an overall look at the leaderboard here. And Isaac Robinson, shout out to that man. He just graduated college, just committed to full-time touring, and gets a big Elite Series win right off the rip. Yeah, holds off a great run from Chris Dickerson. Not an easy man to hold off. So congratulations, Isaac. I know you're going to enjoy your time out here if you keep playing like that. Absolutely. Had a third earlier this year as well, so already making some noise. And again, we appreciate you all tuning in. Please follow subscribe. You can catch more content here at Gatekeeper Meter. I've been Dustin Murray. With me has been Nathan Queen. Catch you next time. We'll see you guys out there.